The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Sorry I am a minute late. Uh, we're using GoToWebinar, which when we do this, it's delivered over the internet. And that internet thing isn't always totally reliable. <laughs> Always a challenge with technology. All right, it is September 10th. My name is Todd Rich. I'm head of education at Nadex. And this is a session on the basics of knockouts and binary options. Uh, and uh, before I get into the thick of things, because I want to keep them moving along, I do have a little housekeeping item to take care of. Namely, that this webinar, as are all of our webinars, are brought to you by our compliance department, our major sponsor. Uh, and actually, this is not to be taken lightly. Uh, trading on Nadex does involve risks. In fact, trading anywhere involves risks, and it may not be appropriate. And all trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. The other thing that I would like to really point out here is I am going to be using real examples at some point, and I do not want you to take anything I say today as a buy or sell recommendation. I am doing this strictly for your education purposes only, so it is important that we are all clear on that, uh, that this is an education session. Please don't construe anything I say as a buy or sell recommendation. Uh, this is our agenda, what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to go through knockouts and define them for you. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same for binary options so that you can get a, a good flavor for the difference between the two and what the, the differences are and what you're trading between those two different products. We're then going to jump over to the platform and we're going to go through some examples, both through knockout examples and binary options examples. And we are going to be looking at real markets. Uh, we'll be looking at them in a demo environment. Um, but the prices are what's actually out in, in the market right now. And I'll explain the differences between a live environment and a demo environment when we get there. Now, the one thing that I do want to emphasize, oh, before I get into the, uh, that, I do want to emphasize that this is an interactive session. Uh, at Nadex, we're here to help you. We want you to be successful. If you're successful, we can be successful. And one of the ways that we can help you is let us know how we can help you. Reach out to us. Um, and on this session, this is an interactive session. I will keep my eyes on the questions box, but I have my colleague Sophie in the background. Sophie is here to answer your questions. So if you want to engage, if I go through something a little too quickly or you'd like some clarity on something, please type your questions into Sophie. In fact, if you wanted to type something in right now and say, hey, Sophie, wake up. I'm going to come at you with a bunch of questions. Uh, <laughs> Keep her on her toes. Uh, she is in the background to answer those questions. And I, you know, do take advantage of her as a resource while you've got her. While I am presenting, she is there to help. So by all means, I, I encourage you to take advantage of that um, if you've got any questions or if I'm, and you know what, I'll keep my eye on those as well, because there's a good chance that if you have a question, Somebody else has a similar question, and I'll try to um, I'll try to answer them as I as I go. But I'll also uh, revisit at the end to make sure I didn't leave anything out. Uh, we are going to spend a few minutes on a slide deck. I don't want to go too deep into this, but I like to tee it up. Uh, this session is being recorded, so you'll be able to review it at your convenience. It will be located on our website in the webinar section. It'll also be on our YouTube channel. So you can go to either to find the recordings, but if you want to come back, I do like to put these slides up front so that you can review them at your own pace uh, because they can be very good reference uh, slides for you. So let's talk about what is a knockout. What is a knockout? And a knockout is a contract, all right? And it's got a price range, okay? And that's a, a knockout. You are trading a product. You're trading the actual price of the product. And and it's got two prices, okay? And the two prices it's got are, uh, and there's two price levels. There's a lower price level, which we call the floor, 
and a higher price level, which we call the ceiling. All right, so a knockout is a contract, and it's got these two price ranges that set and establish a range. And what happens is the value of the contract will trade right in line with the underlying. So if you're trading gold, it'll move with the gold futures. If you're trading uh, an indice product, it'll move with the indice futures. Uh, so it does track. We call it a delta one product. It moves right in line with the contract uh, that it covers. And it'll be the same as in any market that you trade. If you think the price of something is going to go up, you would buy it. And if you think the price of something is going down, you can sell it. So I know some people get a little confused with that concept that, hey, how can I sell something that I don't own? It's not that you're owning anything here, is you're taking a direction on the price of something. So you don't have to own it. If I think the price of the S&P 500 is going to go down, I can sell that price and profit if it goes lower. Now, the way a contract expires on a knockout, there's only two ways. It's either the price or the time. And when I say the price, if the price of the underlying touches either the floor or the ceiling, the contract is over and it settles. That's it. And I'm going to go through that and I'm going to show you what that means. Uh, that's one way that the contract would settle. The other is it doesn't touch one of the prices and it eventually will settle at a price between those two levels. And then uh, I'll go through what that means for your potential profits or losses, but it will settle uh, when the contract expires. There, there is a time limit on these and then they'll settle at a price and that'll be that. Now, binary options, a little different. With a knockout, we are trading the actual price. It's pretty intuitive when I go through the examples. Uh, I think it'll make a lot more sense. Again, I like to put these slides up front. Uh, but with binary options, definitely a little different. These are also defined risk, defined reward contracts that tend to be short term, but it's made up of three components. Okay, the in a binary option, you've got the underlying market. Okay, and we'll go through what those markets are. And then there's a condition. It's it's a yes or no. Um, it's there's a price level. All right, and uh, we'll I'll go through some examples of this. But you know, gold. I think gold's trading. Ah, I can't remember where gold is trading now. Fourteen hundred dollars an ounce. Maybe it's more. Uh, but there'll be a condition. Will the price of the Dow Jones be above 28,000? Okay, that's the condition. And then there's going to be a time frame. We've got very, very short term contracts, they're five minutes. We've got longer term contracts, they go out a week. But I will go through what a binary option is. Now, it is defined risk reward. So you know what your risk is getting into or your potential reward is, but whether you're buying or selling it. And a binary option will trade between zero and 100. So it its floor is always, it, it, the, the, the floor number is always zero and the ceiling is always 100. Uh, whereas in, a, in a, a knockout, it's actually gonna be a price range for the product. For binary options, it is always a number between zero and 100. So what is that zero or 100 represent? And it's a true or false question, right? Is this prediction going to happen? And it's either going to be yes, or it's going to be no. And if the answer to the question is yes, so it's true, the contract will eventually settle at 100. It'll go to 100. If it's false, it will go to zero. Uh, and that actually represents dollars too. So a binary option at Nadex is always $100. So when you're trading a binary option, it the way that you can think of it is at that moment in time, what is the probability of that event being true? And that is what the market is pricing. If something, uh, if the condition is, if the condition is, Will the S&P 500 be above a certain price and it's currently right at that price? The binary option is probably going to be trading around 50% because it can go up or it can go down. The price of the option would be around 50. 
okay? And I'm going to go through some very specific examples uh, again so that you, re you really get it. Um, but you can buy or sell these binary options and the, the probability, the prices will change as the underlying price of the underlying changes uh, or as time moves forward. And again, I'm going to show you uh, I'm a big believer in showing. I think it makes a lot more sense when you see it in action. Okay? And I will tell you that both knockouts, and this is actually really important. In fact, I'm going to, whoops, I got to do this. An important rule when trading knockouts and binary options, and this is actually a big key to the game, which is why I put this in. This is the last slide uh, we're really going to see before we jump over to the platform, is Yes, there's an expiration associated with knockouts and binaries, but just because there's an expiration does not mean you have to wait to expiration to see what happens. You can, you can go, okay, I this is my prediction. I think this is going up. I think this is going down, or I think this is going to be true, or I think this is going to be false. And you can wait and see if you're uh, where it ends up. But just because there's an expiration does not mean you have to wait. You can choose to exit your position early. In fact, most, uh, I'm not going to say a lot of, of people who trade these products, in fact, do indeed liquidate them before settlement. Um, and they'll do so to either lock in profits or limit losses. So even though you're doing in both cases, and we'll go through it, they're very defined risk, very defined reward, you can always choose to exit early. And that is an important because I, I, I find that, um, you know, people can be a little bit more successful if they manage their risk a little bit more closely. Um, before I jump over to the platform, this is one thing I would like to point out. As I mentioned up front, uh, we're here to help. I've got Sophie in the background. When we get over to the platform, please hammer her with questions because uh, I, I, I know right now you might be scratching your head a little bit, uh, but it'll make much more sense when you see it. Uh, I'm a big fan of showing it. Uh, but if you do need to reach out to us, you can always email us, customer service at Nadex. Uh, we are on all the different social media channels, so you can find information there. And, you know, we'd love to hear from you. There's this trust pilot, and if you could note that, that URL down, it's an opportunity for you to pro provide feedback, and we would love to hear it. Give us our feedback, you know, and we like to hear all of it, good and bad, ways that we could be doing things better or things that you love about it. Hey, this is really cool, uh, but please, if you could, take a time and, and take a few minutes and drop in uh, a review. All right, it's at this point where I am going to jump over to the platform. Um, as I like to say, my mom is from the great state of Missouri or Missouri. It is the show me state. I think a lot of this resonates and that's one of the cool things about our platform is it makes things so intuitive uh, that it makes it a little bit easier to understand when you actually see it in action. So I am going to switch over to here, all right, and our website. And one thing I would like to point out is if you look at the learning section of our website, one, uh, there are some great in the learning section itself. There are some access to some resources. We've got platform tutorials, very short uh, little videos uh, if you'd like to review them. They're also like located on our YouTube channel. In fact, I would encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be alerted whenever we put new content up there. But we've also got some articles um, and uh, other things that you'll see in the learning section like our blogs. There's some great content in here. I would recommend that you take a look and uh, it's an opportunity for you to expand your knowledge. All right, when we log into the platform and I'm going to now jump over to the platform and let's do this so you can see my screen a little easier. I want to make it as big as I can. All right, you should now be seeing the Nadex platform. Now, if you'll notice, I am in a demo environment. Now, the way this works is um, we stream prices into um, we stream prices into 
our, uh, our, our demo environment. So the prices that you see are the current market prices, but your experience in a demo environment will be different than a live environment. If I were in the live environment, this would say live. And the reason that is, is that there's different people looking at the different environments. Some people are just practicing and trying to learn, and I highly encourage if you don't have a demo account to definitely get one and practice. Um, we find that people who uh, navigate in our plat in our demo environment and our demo platform before going into the live one tend to be a little bit more successful because they become more comfortable with the platform as well as the products. Uh, versus a live environment where you've got, a, you know, there's a, a, a large variety of participants who are all looking and they all have di potentially differing opinions. All right, when you log into the platform, you'll notice um, a couple of things. I just want to point them out. One, there's the, there's all of our markets. In fact, if I go back um, and just click on markets, you'll notice we've got binary options, call spreads, which I'll touch on, and knockouts. Uh, we're going to go through knockouts first, uh, and then at the bottom, there's a positions pane, which I'm actually going to get rid of very quickly, and then there's your order ticket on the right-hand side, and these these little blue arrows, you can hide and expand and contract. In fact, uh, I'm going to uh, make the, the chart, the center section, uh, bigger in a second, so you can definitely follow along, but let's take a quick look at knockouts. And when I click on knockouts, you'll see the different classes that we currently have. Indices, foreign exchange pairs, and we're going to be adding uh, more. Look at, look at, you can see uh, all these new knockout pairs. We have commodities, all right? Gold, silver, nat gas, crude oil. So we've been adding new commodities, uh, any of these that you want to trade. Uh, and then, of course, there's you know, all of these indices. Uh, and if you're not familiar with these names, uh, these are, uh, the US 500 is indeed the S&P 500. The US small cap is the Russell 2000. The US tech 100 is the NASDAQ index. And Wall Street 30 is the Dow Jones. So I'm trying to think, what should I use today as an example? Um, if anyone's got a particular market that they'd like me to just do an example in, by all means, uh, type it in. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to start with an indice, just because the markets have been so volatile. Um, I'm going to take a look at the uh, S&P 500. Actually, let's just see. Hold on. Yeah, people. Okay, someone want that? Let's do this. We'll we'll go ahead and we'll do the Dow Jones. Let's do the Dow Jones. Okay. So when I click on the Wall Street 30, I this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and notice there are four knockout ranges. I'm not, it doesn't really matter which one I pick, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on one of them, and that is going to populate the chart, okay? I am now going to hide that, and that way I can make my chart a little bit bigger. Now, what am I looking at here? I am looking at a picture of, and let's go ahead, uh, and what do we wanna do? Let's look at the, let's do a, a one week chart okay here's a one week chart and we can make it every 10 minutes if we like and this is a picture of the dow jones industrial average uh every 10 minutes over for the last week now if you'll notice on the left hand side there are four different blue lines those are the different knockout ranges that's why i said it didn't really matter which one i chose i just wanted to bring a a chart of the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average and take a look at what we're looking at, okay? And I'm now going to pick uh, one of these knockouts. Um, let's do the second one. Hmm. Here, actually, we'll do this first one, okay? And let's, um, you can click buy or sell and that'll make sure that it's populated here on the right. What am I looking at? On the chart, we give you the floor and the ceiling. Very distinctly, you can see the floor of this contract, 27,630, and the ceiling, 28,130. That is also on the, on the top of the order ticket. All right, and now what are we doing? And it also tells me when this expires, 
and it tells me when it expires here as well in a day and three hours and the current indicative price and you see the indicative price on the order ticket as well as on the chart what am i trading when i trade a knockout all right if if i thought the dow jones industrial average were going to go higher from this point i would simply buy one of these contracts all right i've got a floor and i've got a ceiling if i were to buy one and let's it's, it's ticky let's put one right in between 27 7 oh look it's ticking 27 780 let's just make it 27 780 okay and um I'm picking a price level and I'm just going to place my order. All right. And uh, you see that's received my order um, and it's been bouncing around in here. And oh, and I actually now have a position. All right. Oddly enough, uh, I actually ended up buying that in this demo environment. You can see that I bought it for 27,780. And what did I actually do? All right. When I bought that one, I've got this floor and ceiling. If it were two, trade lower i am wrong if it goes down and it touches the floor 27 630 right down here that is where i would get knocked out of the trade okay if it trades down and if it traded down from where i bought it 27 780 the most that i can lose is 150 dollars. if this trades down and touches 27 630 i get knocked out this contract settles that's it it's over on the flip side if it goes higher and it gets up to 28,130 and it touches 28,130, which it did, it looks like um, earlier in the day, I would have gotten knocked out. So had I done this earlier in the day when it was down here um, and then it traded higher, I would have gotten knocked out and I would have recognized my maximum pop potential profit of 350. All right. So what it is, is I am putting on a defined risk, defined reward trade. If I think it's going up and I buy it, I know exactly how much I could potentially lose. Uh, if it were to go down and touch the lower boundary, I know exactly how much I can make if it were to touch the upper boundary. All right. So it pretty much puts in a defined risk with a profit goal. So if you want to think about it, this is my stop loss below. And this is my exit where I'd want to get out. Now that's built into the contract. Now, if you wanted different risk parameters, you could always choose a different knockout. Um, so had I, you know, here's here's one that's much lower. All right. So here's one. Uh, let's shrink this in because we can't even see, you know, where the floor is all the way down at 27,330, and it's the the ceiling is 27,830. Um, now here, if I were to buy one of these, there's not much that I stand to make. I could only make $36 if it keeps ticking a little higher. But if it went lower, I would lose. Uh, I could lose $464. So would it make sense necessarily to potentially buy this one? Mm, not necessarily. Uh, this is one where you might want to use it if you actually wanted to sell. Because um, if I were to sell one of these at $27,800, let us just round it off. 27,800. All right. Let's say I thought the Dow Jones were going to go lower. All right. For some reason, I mean, it's rallying a little bit. And I say, no way. This is a fake rally. This is going lower. If I sold one right here at 27,800, if I'm wrong and it traded up to 27,830, I can only lose 30 bucks. All right. I, I went short and I was wrong and I got knocked out. But if I'm right and this thing does actually really sell, sell off, um, I could stand to potentially make 470. So you end up picking or choosing the knockout with the range that best suits your strategy. Uh, my strategy was I wanted to go long, so this is the one that I chose. And, you know, I bought it at 27880 Let's put that price back in there. Yay, it's ticked up a little bit. So I bought and I, did, I bought this one because I, I, I wanted to go long. I, I knew that I wanted to be stopped out if I was wrong. So I picked one with the, the closest floor uh, to my buy price, and it gives me some up, uh, upward range. Now, if it touches, any one of these contracts touches, it settles and will list another contract. 
So we'll just naturally list the next contract. So there'll always be four uh, available for you to trade. If you have any questions about that, please type them in. Now, do we? this question was asked earlier, and I want to make sure, do I have to wait until expiration to see what happens? And the answer is no. If I were wrong, and this thing started going down, I bought it at 27 uh, 780. And if it went down to 27, 700 and I thought, oops, um, I was wrong. I could always just sell it and take a partial loss. I don't have to wait for it to get down to 27, 630 and lose all 150. I can cut my losses early if I change my mind and decide I was wrong. On the flip side, I could also try to take a partial profit. OK, I could take a partial profit. I don't have to risk it if it goes. I, I don't have to wait for it to get up to twenty eight thousand one thirty for me to get out. I mean, this has already started to go in my favor. Let's just say I wanted to make a quick. Ten dollars uh, or fifteen dollars, I could say. You know what, I'll just I'd sell it at twenty seven seven ninety five. OK, and I can place my order. All right, I'm I'm right up here. at. Uh, and there, did it get my order? What happened there? I am in a demo environment and did I place it? Oh, wait, hold on. I want to, oh, wait, there we go. I want to sell one at 27.795. There we go. I'm going to sell it. I'll place my order. There's my order. All right, I'd sell it up at 27. 795. If it trades there, great. I'll be out of my trade and um and I'll take a I'll I'll take a quick profit. So the answer is do I have to wait? No. I can take a partial profit if I'm happy with hey, I made a quick $15, I'll take it or cut my losses um if I want to get out. You know what? I think I ended up buying two of them. So let's go ahead 278 27, 800. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and sell it and get out. So I actually had two of them and now I have no position. All right. So that is knockouts. All right. I buy if I think it's going up. I sell if I think it's going down. I've got a floor and a ceiling that define my risk or reward before I enter the trade. So I know what my potential maximum profit or maximum potential loss are before I get in, it's calculated on the order ticket. And then once I do a trade, I can choose to exit early. If I wanna get out early, I can uh, liquidate a, you know, a position, um, and you know what? Let's say I think it's going to turn around and I want to go short one here at 27,805. Let's just do that. And, you know, I changed my mind. Um, well, look at this. It keeps going uh, higher. Let's go 27,810. I want to put one that's in the market. All right. Uh, sell one at 27,810. Uh, place the order. 27. There we go. Now, let's just do 27805. There we go. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I put multiple. I clicked it so many times. You know what? And I can always delete the extra orders because I'm uh, getting a little uh, click happy <laughs> over here. I kept on clicking. Um, so, uh, oh, look, it, it went all the way back down. I missed uh, my chance to sell one up at. 27 8 10 okay that's fine um, but when I put it my port put my order in at 27 8 10 all right now that was a sh I was looking to go short uh, if it kept going higher I knew where my maximum potential loss would be if it kept on it went all the way up to 28 130 I could have potentially lost three hundred and twenty dollars and my maximum my profit potential profit would have been 180 if it went down to 27 630 and if I sold one I could always buy it back lower at a partial profit, I don't have to wait for it to get all the way down here, or I could always buy it back at a higher price and cut my losses if I was wrong. Now, again, if on my position, it does not touch either the floor or the ceiling in the next one day and three hours, it will settle at a price in this range, all right? So, um, and 
the, my profit or loss then would be the difference between where I bought or sold it and where it settles. So if, let's say I sell one actually, uh, let's modify this order because it's getting a little closer. Let's modify this order to 27,805. Okay, and I just sold one. Okay, I sold one at 27,805. Let's say, all right, and I know exactly what my risk is. Here's where I sold it. I know that if it keeps going higher, I can, and I might have to buy it back for a, a partial loss if I'm wrong, if it keeps rallying. Uh, if it comes back down, I'll buy it back maybe for a partial profit. Um, but if it doesn't touch either one of these ranges, my profit or loss will be the difference between, now I sold this at 27,805. If it settles below 27,805, I'll have a partial profit knowing that my maximum profit's only 175. And if it settles above and it doesn't touch 28,130, I'm going to have a partial loss. I will have some type of loss anywhere in, uh, above 27,805, um, but I know that my maximum loss is 325 if it actually gets all the way up to 28,130. That's where I would get knocked out. And again, just like I said before, you know, I sold it at 27,805. If I decide, you know, I'm... I, I, I changed my mind. I think this is going to keep going higher. Uh, I can always choose, and if I go to my position, here we are my positions paid. Um, if I click on the position, it will put in a contra order for me to liquidate, and I can simply take a partial loss. And I took a partial loss, and notice when I put that trade in, my position's gone. So hey, one trade I made a little bit, one trade I lost a little bit. Uh, I don't have to wait to see what happens. All right, so that is knockouts. If there are any questions, it should be pretty intuitive. And if you notice, the, it, the, the indicative price of the underlying and the prices that I trade are going to be right around the indicative price of the underlying. Uh, it is a Delta One product. We are trading the price of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Pretty intuitive. If I think it's going up, I buy. If I think it's going down, I sell. And I've got my risk parameters around it. And I'm going to choose the knockout that best fits what I am doing. So if I were really going short, I probably wouldn't have sold this one. All right. I probably would have sold maybe this one, uh, which was the 27,930 and the 27,430. And the reason I probably would have sold that one is because my risk was limited a little bit more. I didn't have that ceiling what, uh, was a little closer. Was a little closer, and my floor gave me room to make more profit to the downside. Um, so again, you're going to choose the knockout range that best suits your trade and what your opinion is. And again, nothing I'm saying is a buy or sell recommendation, but you've got to make that determination on your own. All right, I am now going to jump over to binary options because binary options are different. When I click on this little markets pane, it'll bring up my uh, products page and I'm going to click on binary options and for binary options I'm actually going to jump into commodities okay I'm gonna click on commodities and let's, let's let's do gold why not and I'm going to choose a weekly contract for gold now uh, notice that these prices uh, are very different <laughs> than what you see on a knockout and as I mentioned, these will always trade between 0 and 100. And again, these are the probability of the answer being true. So let's pick the one that's right around 50, the, clo the one that's closest to 50, and it's 1961.50. So I'm going to click on that, and that's going to populate a chart of gold. I am now going to hide that, and we can actually see the different binary options around the current indicative price. Here's the current indicative price is 1963. You also see that up here, and we see uh, the price of the binary options here on the chart. I could trade right from here, or I can choose up here on the order ticket. Now again, what am I trading? I'm trading the probability of this answer being true. Will gold finish higher than 1961.50 at 1.30 p.m. tomorrow? in one day, we have one day, 
And if I think the answer is yes, and notice how this is current, the current indicative price is already higher than this, so it's trading higher than a 50 probability. Let's say I do think it's going to stay above. So maybe I want to pay, let's just say I'm willing to pay 55. I think there's a 55% chance. And I'm going to go ahead and place my buy order for 55. And there's my bid in the demo environment. I don't know whether I'm going to buy it or not. But you can see I've got the order down here. There's my order. Now, if I were to buy one of these at 55, notice how I, because I'm trying to buy it, I need gold to finish in the blue area of the chart for this to be a profitable trade, assuming I actually buy one. Now, what am I risking? If I buy one at 55, I am paying $55. That's what I risk. Now, how would I lose that $55 if I bought one? If this question ends up being false or untrue, meaning gold finishes below. If gold finishes at 1961.50 or below, the answer to this question is no. The contract goes to zero. Again, binary. It's either going to be zero or 100 in the end. That's it. There's only two choices. It's all or nothing. There's no, it finished in a range. I was partially right or partially wrong. You're either all right or all wrong. It's an all or nothing proposition. Um, and if it settles below, if I buy one at 55, let's see, um, you know, I'm going to move it up to 58. Maybe it'll trade in here. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, first, let's just click on this so I can amend the order before I end up placing another trade. Let's go ahead and say amend this order. I just raised it to 58. All right, so there's my order again. Okay. Hide this. Okay. Now, maybe, and maybe I'll buy one and maybe I won't. Now, um, again, if I were to buy one at 58, let's just kind of click here. If I, I'm risking $58 and the most I can make is 42. And, and how does that 42 get calculated? If there's any concerns or questions around that, the 42 is this contract goes to a hundred. I paid 58 for it. It goes to a hundred. It settles at a hundred. I make 42. I, so I risk 58 to potentially get a hundred. My profit would be 42. And again, we calculate your maximum potential profit or maximum potential loss before you enter the trade. Okay. Now, there are, this is the, uh, you know, we're playing around with one that's right here at the money. Notice down below um, the 1951 and a half, it's much lower. It's got a very high probability. Notice how this is already trading um, up around in, in the 85 range. So when you look at the bid ask for a binary option, you look at the middle of that bid ask spread, which right now is around 87. The market is telling us there's an 87% chance that gold will finish higher than 1951.50. And so it only has to finish at 1951.51, 1951 and 51 for this to be true and it stays, it's, it goes to 100. So a high probability trade, okay? Now you want a lower probability trade. Let's look at an out of the money option, okay? Let's look up here. Um, at 1971.50. Okay, now gold is currently trading well below that price. So the market is saying there's really a very low probability that this is going to be true. And so what somebody might say is, you know what, I don't think this is going to happen. I, I, you know, I think gold might go higher, but it's not going to go that high. I could choose to say, um, I want to sell one of these at 22. Now, if I were to sell one at 22, and let's go ahead and place that order. Okay, and there you see my order. And again, this is a demo environment. I don't know who's looking here and if those will trade. Um, if I were to sell one at 22, I'm collecting $22. If it stays uh, at 1971.5 or lower, it stays in this red area, this contract will go to zero and I will have profited $22. I sold it at 22 and it goes to zero. Now, if I sell it at 22 and it goes up, Okay, and it goes and it settles above 1971.50. This contract will go to 100. 
All right, and looks like I just sold one, so I actually have that position on. Uh, if I if it goes above, this contract would go to a hundred, meaning I sold it at twenty two, it went to a hundred, I would lose seventy eight dollars. So I am risking seventy eight dollars. Right, I just risk seventy eight dollars to potentially make twenty two, but it's a higher probability trade. I'm going to risk more to make less, but the odds are on my side. Okay, I mean the probability is that you know right now there's only a twenty five percent chance that it will get above there. Uh, so it's kind of fun to be able to look at how the market is pricing these probabilities. Again, uh, I don't have to wait. All right, if this keeps going higher, I can choose to buy it back for a partial loss. All right, I don't have to wait until expiration to see what happens. I can always choose to liquidate a position early. Now, what I would like to do, let's take a quick look at a binary, these five minute binary options, um, because this is where you can really see that price action. If I could do this, um, this contract is going to settle in. Five, uh, in two minutes and there we go this is the pound all right so notice this is there's a minute 42 seconds to go these are our five minute binaries this is the pound us dollar and this is the greatest way to really see how the probabilities of these change notice how this as this ticks um the probability as the price goes below the probability of this one being true just dropped below 50 percent and notice this one down here, as it continues to tick lower, you know, and now it's ticking higher. Look at that. I could have just bought this in the 30% range, and now it's trading in the 60% range. So it's as you approach expiration, there's a minute and six seconds. And I wanted you to see these five minute binaries because it's so volatile, it really does give you an opportunity to see how these price probabilities can move very dramatically uh, as you hit expiration. In fact, in the last 20 seconds, the prices will go blank because no one can take the risk of where it's going to settle. Um, notice it just dropped below this level now. I mean, it's ticking around pretty quickly um, because all of these contracts are either gonna go to 100 or zero. This contract will go to, a, this. if it stays down below here, there in there, the prices went, I said about 20, 25 seconds, I was right on. Um, it's an opportunity for you to really see the price volatility. And look at this. As this ticks, um, we got 13 seconds left and we can see where it is. It looks as though, well, let's wait and see. Eight seconds. Wow, look at that. Move four seconds. Two seconds. There, it just settled. All right, now this 12 839 actually settled at a hundred and uh these this one up here settled at zero now what happened uh is a new five minute option just listed again so um all the prices just repopulated and you can watch this um this next five minutes how these volatility uh, these probabilities and these prices will change because eventually all of these will either go to zero or 100. So if you're looking for some very dramatic, fast price action, five minute binaries are very quick, and you saw how quickly they can go from zero to 100 or 100 to zero as it approaches expiration or settlement, which is why a lot of people will prefer to liquidate any position early particularly binaries cuz if they're having if they have a profit um if they bought a uh, if they bought one or sold one and it's uh it's gone largely in their favor they might liquidate it and capture as much profit as they can versus risking in the last few seconds it going entirely against them and again it's binary nature all or nothing it either goes to 0 or 100 so you you know, sometimes you just want to lock in as, um, uh, as much profit as you can, um, foregoing a little bit of that uh, because you don't want to risk it all in the last couple of seconds. And again, as you can see, these probabilities move quickly as the price of the underlying moves. So I, I like to show five minute binaries uh, because it really does uh, amplify the, uh, the, the price movement in the probabilities. 
Um, and then, you know, again, you've got to find the one that suits you best. Uh, this is look at this 20 minute binary is coming up, coming due in the next two minutes. I was just going to kind of show you that there's we've got five minutes. Those are all foreign exchange pairs. We've got 20 minute binaries, which are in the indices, the US indices. And then we've got binary options. Um, they have different settlement times, hourly, daily. Here, you know, here's a gold weekly contract. Okay, so here's the gold weekly, and, and th there's not going to be as much price volatility in here. And I think this is what we were looking at earlier. I think this is the one that I sold. In fact, it does. I sold this one, and I am I've got an order in for this one. It's kind of nice that we do that on the charts. And in fact, um, before I wrap today, I would like to show you some of the cool things we've got on our charts. And since I've got positions, uh, notice that. I mean, I'm, tr I'm trying to buy one here at 58. Uh, this I sold at 22. Um, I like that on our binary charts, you've got that. But I just want to show you, we've got to help you in your journey. We've got some pretty robust functionality around technical indicators. If you take a look at indicators, we've got a, a, a large choice of uh, of technical indicators that will auto populate you choose the one you want uh, and uh, here i'm just going to go with bollinger if you're not quite certain what it is there's a little i and it we've got uh dynamic education for you so where you can get a little bit of information about it uh, at least it gives you you know some top level information on what the indicator means if you want to draw it you would simply click on it and it will populate your chart and um, if I want to, I clicked on the little box down here, I can customize any of those indicators how I see fit. And then if I want to get rid of them, I can simply click the little X, it clears them. Uh, also, I can just, I could put them on and then I can turn them back off. We've also got a variety of drawing tools, so you can customize the charts however you like. If you wanted to put in some of your own trend lines or channels, let's just draw a little channel here that works. I don't know, we're kind of seeing. Um, I'm just gonna fit a channel in here a little bit. All right, and so again, I'm uh, that, that's not perfect, but I just wanted to show you that you could put your own channels if you wanted to put up uh, the Fibonacci uh, retracement, all right? It's, I see an uptrend here in gold a little bit. And I can simply, you know, fit my Fibonacci on here, and it would potentially give me levels where I might see support and resistance that could help me make determinations on where I might want to sell or where I might want to buy. I hope you've been engaging very much with uh, Sophie in the background, and it does look like we've uh, had quite a few questions, and I'm glad that you guys were keeping her busy. Um, again, this session was recorded. Uh, it will be made available on our YouTube channel or on our website. Uh, a quick little recap. Knockouts, Delta 1. You buy it if you think it's going up. You sell it if you think it's going down. And it's a Delta 1 product. Right? It's going to track the price of the underlying here's the S&P 500, and you've got distinct ranges where you would get uh, knocked out uh, either for a profit or for a loss, uh, and you know that getting into a trade, versus binary options, which are really their, their predictions. Is the price of gold going to be above a certain level at, uh, on a certain date, yes or no, and it's an all or nothing. And what you're trading is the probability of that being true. Uh, if you, uh, if you, if you, uh, if you, if you think it's going to be true, uh, you buy it and it goes to 100. If you think it's going to be false, you sell it, and it would go to zero. Um, and people are asking. You know, people were typing in questions. Unfortunately, you can't see all the questions that people were asking, uh, but I've been answering them as I've been going, or at least I've been trying to. So you've been getting the answers uh, as we go, fortunately. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention, you know what? I think I can do this. Um, 
stay, stay uh, you know, pay attention to your emails. Uh, we are having next week uh, with our partner Daily FX. We're having an entire week of education. It's a three-day education summit. It is virtual. It is free. Uh, you should, if you're on this webinar, in all likelihood have gotten an email uh, letting you know. And hopefully you can join us next week. It's Trade Your Market, where we'll, we will be doing a deep dive into commodities on day one, indices on day two, and foreign exchange on day three, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four hours each day. We've got daily FX analysts who will be presenting. We've got Nadex people who will be talking about Nadex products. And we will have uh, our, our parent company, IG, uh, talking about uh, what they've got to offer. And we've got some really cool keynote speakers on each day. So uh, please join us next week for that uh, daily FX uh, education summit. Uh, it's the first of many to come. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope we got to all of your questions, and I want to wish everyone good luck in the markets.